Hi, this is Mark and Trent with Medigeek. We are moving into a new office space and we thought, you know, since we're putting in Wi-Fi, what better opportunity to make a video about it and put it up on Medigeek.net. We're looking at basic web connectivity, so that's your email, that's some streaming, and we do want to be able to do voice over Wi-Fi for a cordless phone implementation. What can you tell us about the construction of our office space here on the third floor? We're looking at a basic office uh, with drywall and some metal doors. The brick is, you know, several, several layers thick, and we've got cement pillars in here that are cement with steel. Those can cause a lot of loss as well. Well, Ekahau is a very cool tool because you can take a map of any floor plan and you can use that to build walls based on the type of materials. This red line, as we see here, this is the red brick uh, for the outside of the building, while the drywall is these brown lines, as we see here. And I've built the cement pillars that are in the office here. And what this does is it, it creates the propagation patterns of the access points. The planning software will give a signal strength map based on RF propagation levels. The walls will generate a loss in the RF propagation and so this is a really great way of determining if you have enough coverage. I can select any access point and it will generate the pattern created by that access point. So these two combined we have sufficient coverage for the entire office for basic wireless connectivity. Trent, why don't you tell us a little bit about the rig we've got here and uh, why you need it? Well, it's very important to site service in general because it emulates where you actually will have the AP. So you can't have the AP on the floor, you can't have it on the shelf. You want it where you think it will be. You also want to consider the channel that you are testing the AP on. And we test the channel using uh, a Wi-Spy spectrum analyzer. And this is going to show you all the raw noise. So things that are not Wi-Fi that may cause interference, you'll be able to see that activity. So what you want to do is you want to choose the least congested channel. And when we look at the spectrum, we notice that there's this red spike of activity around Wi-Fi channel 5. Red means that this area in the RF spectrum is being heavily utilized. That means something is constantly transmitting. That typically means that you can expect interference on that channel. This curve shape is our AP on a stick. You can see the power level is almost negative 30. And we feel like we've chosen a pretty good channel because we're avoiding this red activity here. When we do an actual site survey with Ekahau, we need to find our place on the map. And while I'm walking, Ekahau is actually going to log all of the RSSI for all of the Wi-Fi access points that it can sense. And I'm going to get several points for each room. And since every single room is going to be occupied with someone in here that is probably going to need some level of Wi-Fi connectivity, I'm just going to walk in each room really quickly and get several points. With the Ekahau site survey software, it's very, very quick and easy. You just click at each point you turn and it's going to take all of this data and it's going to aggregate it into a very very visual map so as I'm walking through it's continually building a map of every single access point and the signal strength it has there when we were choosing the channel for the Wi-Fi on a stick we noticed that there was some noise on Wi-Fi channel 5 if we ever do need to use that, that channel, we do need to find this a source of interference. So it's very easy to find devices in Channelizer because it has this feature called Device Finder. It will find things based strictly on RF activity. So you just highlight an area in the frequency range and a little contextual menu will pop up and you click Device Finder. Now this will track the ampl amplitude levels of this specific frequency range that I have selected here. And you'll notice that in the bottom section a details tab will pop up. And this will be the amplitude levels of that specific frequency range. And as you walk around these amplitude levels will increase or decrease depending on your location and the transmitter. So as you get closer to it, you'll notice that the, the overall amplitude levels will increase as well. This is really nice because if, you, if there is some sort of transmitter that you aren't aware of, 
you'll be able to find it with the channel editor software. When you are doing all of your results and you're not getting exactly what you need, this thing is actually going to show you the true RF levels in the environment. So wireless security cameras, cordless phones, anything that could potentially cause a problem, the Wi-Fi is going to show it to you and you can find it quite easily. Why don't you give us the verdict on how it went? For us, we determined that APs on channels 1 and 11 will be sufficient. ECHAL can handle the planning and the site survey very easily. If we hire any more people, we may want to investigate adding an another to handle the additional throughput required. Uh, that means that we will need to investigate the interference issue that we saw on channels 4, 5, and 6. Wi-Fi is everywhere, and as I always like to tell people, we are now in a Wi-Fi design era where you have to plan your wireless environments. That means you have to plan for the unknown. You have to build a virtual environment to see the propagation. You have to verify those results with an actual walking site survey. You have to use a spectrum analyzer to see if there are any non-Wi-Fi devices that may be competing with your Wi-Fi access points. Tools like Ekahow and Channelizer Pro are going to become even more important now than they ever have been because we are competing for a limited range of the 2.4 and 5 gigahertz spectrums. And as we go on, we'll see a lot more of these tools being used by professionals every day.